Well, after Bishop Harry Jackson was given a 15% chance of surviving stage three cancer, he told his oldest daughter it was a win-win diagnosis. Turns out he was right. Take a look. No matter what situation you're facing, the death of a loved one, an illness or financial difficulties, Bishop Harry Jackson, senior pastor of Hope Christian Church in Beltsville, Maryland, says there's hope. He knows because in 2005, Bishop Jackson was diagnosed with stage three esophageal cancer and was given a 15% chance of survival. And please welcome back to the 700 Club, my friend Bishop Harry Jackson. It's so good to see you. Looking good to see so you, Wendy. Fabulous. That Thank is a you. fantastic tie. I just have to say, you look sharp. I'm trying to imitate Pat Robertson <laughs> with my. It's not easy. Dashery. <laughs> it's not easy. Take us back, 2005. What was going on, Bishop Jackson, when you were first diagnosed with cancer? Well, I had just kind of emerged, if you will, on national scene speaking out about moral issues and uh, public policy issues in our nation, a real burden for America. And uh, right at that time, it seemed that uh, my doctor was shocked. I'd had a major physical a year before, everything was in order. And for me to have advanced cancer and for a surgeon at Johns Hopkins Hospital to sit and tell mm -hmm. my wife and I together that if we acted immediately, mm. there may be an increase of potential for me to live, but I'd have to do chemo on my hip. Uh, every two minutes, it spraying chemo yeah. into my system, another chemo trip once a week, and radiation five uh, days a week for five weeks in a row. And after all of that, if I was able to survive, I would be okay, and they would have surgery. Yeah. I had a stroke. My total right side was paralyzed. I couldn't talk for a while, and my right hand couldn't function and couldn't walk. Bishop, I remember interviewing you. You were still going on TV when you were going through your recovery. Yes. You were probably about 40 pounds lighter than you are right now. It's and we were worried about you. We were like, what is going on? But you were still getting on TV. You did not give up. Well, what happened in the midst of it, and really it's the subject matter for the book, is I felt that the Lord showed me that I had an assignment I had to do, mm -hmm. and 95% of my performing my assignment was just showing up. Mm -hmm. If I'd show up, then he would come in his power. One day I was on my way to CNN. I had been coughing, and, and my body was reacting negatively to the chemo and right. such that I was taking. And I felt like, why did I tell these people I was going to come? Mm -hmm. I got to the studio, and as I was getting out of the vehicle, I said, Lord, I stand in weakness, mm -hmm. but you stand in strength. Walked into the studio, sat down, everything changed. Coughing went away, clarity of mind Amazing. came. For about an hour, it was a protracted interview, give and take thing, and then I left. 20 minutes away from the studio, the coffin comes back and all of that. But you showed up. That was the key. You showed yes. up and then not by my, nor by power, but by my spirit, God took over. Exactly. Now, why did you tell your oldest daughter it was a win-win situation when you got this esophageal, how do you say it, esophageal? Esophageal cancer. cancer. Yeah, yeah, cancer of the esophagus. Well, what I told her, told her, most people live only about three or four months after a diagnosis. Uh, but what I told her was, if what I preached all these years was true, and worst case, I died, I would go to heaven, and I would be in my eternal reward. Right. And if the Lord wasn't finished with me yet, there's no way under heaven <laughs> that I was going to go out or be diminished through the uh, treatment at John Hopkins. And you got some incredible hope through a newspaper article when you were laying in the hospital. How did that encourage you? Tell us about that. Well, it was crazy because <laughs> I had, it really was. I had been interviewed some months before by the Baltimore Sun. And uh, I wake up after having had a stroke, after having had a near death experience of another kind, after having seven and a half hours of surgery, I had a heart arrhythmia. My heart was racing up to 180 mm. some beats a minute, and then it would go down to under 80. And I wake up in the hospital that day in intensive care, and I 
set out for the Sunday uh, Baltimore Sun, and uh, I got the paper uh, and looked at it. Yeah. And there was an article in there said, seizing a moral mantle. And it was an article about me. And I took it as God's birthday gift it to me. It was your birthday. It was well. my birthday. And it was a Q&A with you in the newspaper all about your mission. Yes. And so you said, God must not be finished with me. He can't <laughs> be finished with me yet, even though I'm still in intensive care. And I yes. took from that, yeah, a lot of lessons. And uh, I feel like the folks in our audience today need to understand that crisis, yeah. the word in Chinese is made up of two characters, danger and opportunity. Mm, that in that. their crisis, in their family problem, financial problem, health problem, that God is still there and he wants to push the easy button or a GPS reset and he can take them yeah. to and their destiny. And I, I feel like there are many, many people in the body of Christ who don't realize mm. that I believe our nation and the nations of the world are about to experience a mighty visitation from the Lord. And that what we've got to do is get ourselves in position. And uh, so even though it may look like darkness is all around, yeah. that the Lord wants us to take several simple steps to align with his divine will and boom, he's going to break us out of these troubles and project us into our God-ordained destiny. And those six steps are outlined in your fabulous new book called You Were Born for More. This is a fantastic book, and your, you. lo your testimony is incredible. So glad to see you looking great and strong, and just knowing what the Lord did um, is going to encourage so many lives. Well, you need to get this book, You Were Born for More, available wherever books are sold. Bishop Jackson, God bless you. Thanks so much Thank for being you, with Wendy. us. Thank you, Wendy. Bless you.